taking a look at the Pittsburgh Penguins reveals some intriguing fantasy targets, but also a team on the brink of being a losing squad for a number of years to come. That's why you're tapped into the latest episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast to find out exactly what's going on with Crosby and the boys. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Temperatures are dropping, but the heat, it's going up a notch inside the lab on the latest episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, your daily source for fantasy hockey news and draft prep. What is going on, everybody? Shout out to the everydayers holding us down, making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers that bet five bucks get three weeks free of NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Mr. Roden. Giddy up. You know I like talking about Sidney Crosby. You know I like talking about these Pittsburgh Penguins. But as I alluded to off the top, we know that window for winning has been rapidly closing. And I think this really is the last kick at the can for this core. I don't know what you think. Over to you right away, my friend. You know who's in the number one spot. One of my favorite players to ever grace an ice surface. But after that, Let's talk about it. Who are you looking at, and what do you think about this Penguins team this season? You like talking about Sidney Crosby, the you know the guy. Anytime assists, Crosby. Anytime that, assists. Anytime, assist, any, anytime Crosby assists. Yeah. That, that Sidney Crosby. Yeah, we like talking Cheers. about Sidney Crosby, and that is his boy over there. I mean, if you if you yeah. were following Flip for his big time <laughs> bets and his uh, you know pick of the night, you you saw Sidney Crosby anytime assists was there uh, all the time, and it hit. I want to yep. say ninety seven percent of the time. So <laughs> he is he is absolutely incredible. Let's call it ninety. Uh, but absolutely incredible with the flips picks over there. Uh, big Appreciate time bets, getting after it, uh, getting after it. And we'll get after it again this upcoming season, just like Sidney Crosby will for the Pittsburgh Penguins heading into his 20th season in the National Hockey League. It's Thank absolutely you. incredible. The Thank career you. that we have seen, generational talent, one of the best to ever do it. Honestly, I think there could be a very strong debate about the best in the National Hockey League history. You know, there's a lot of names sure. out there. Sidney Crosby has to sure. be in that conversation. I know it's Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. I know that's the consensus, but there could be a debate about it. Sidney Crosby, though, comes in at the at the number one spot off the board in the draft from this Penguins organization. To me, he is a second round pick. He has just fallen down into that second round right now. Um, again, even in a 16 team league, he's still in that second round for me, but such a strong player. The fact that he is still getting back to back 90 plus point seasons. He's playing a full 82 game regular season as well. He's been healthy the last two years, but back to back 90 plus points at the age of 36 and 37 yeah. years old. Again, that's absolutely incredible. I know you've got a great stat, which I'll leave for that for when you Thank talk you. about him, but Sidney Crosby, he just, he does everything for this team. When you look at what happened last year, uh, missing out on the playoffs, Sidney Crosby finished the regular season with 94 points. The next best in line, 67 points from Evgeny Malkin. That is just showing the level of superstar tier that he brings to the game right now, still at 37 years old. Uh, again, first time in his entire career. Let me just check this once again. First time in his entire career, having 100-plus hits. He had 101 yep. hits last year. Uh, the peripherals are still great. Over 275 shots from the man last year. 37 blocks, 40 penalty minutes. Hey, Sidney Crosby might consider a Bengal League beauty now if he can get those penalty minutes a little bit up there. But the hits, yep. the physicality, the goal-scoring ability, 42 goals last year. Love this player. Second-round pick. First one off the board. I almost get teary-eyed talking about Sidney Crosby. I know you do. I know it, you it's, do. But, like, let me just spit this out for, first and foremost. When he was early in his career, there were some serious questions about his health. And he got an absolute beating every single night. Uh, defensemen, forwards, goaltenders. This guy was getting hacked, whacked, and beaten down. And he had some serious 
head issues. He had some serious injury concerns, Steele. And what has he done? He's adapted. He's become one of the smartest players you've ever seen play the game at this level and still bringing the fantasy production that he is is just straight up impressive. And aside from all of the love I have for this player, the bets and all of that. Oh yeah. Is, bets. Yeah. He has actually been one of those guys on my keeper dynasty team now for four straight years. I traded for him. I've kept him and I've looked at it like steel. You could get a boatload of young talent for Sidney Crosby. You're looking at probably two or three really good young pieces in Keeper Dynasty, and I've just held on for the ride, baby, and he's not going anywhere. Slam dunk number one at the top five targets. You've covered it all. He's seemingly getting better with age, like a fine wine, getting it done in the face-off dot steal, getting it done in all the underlying metrics. Take your pick. This guy is one of the best hockey players ever. No doubt. Number one, no doubt. At number two, though, some doubts and <laughs> a lot of them as well. Who are you looking at with number two? Because I could sit here and talk about Crosby this whole episode. You know that. But let's keep it short and sweet. We always <laughs> in and out in 30 minutes. Over to you, Mr. Rose. Sidney Crosby, the ride or die. Hey, he's been absolutely fantastic in fantasy leagues the last two seasons. He's getting his health back. Full 82 games. Hasn't missed a single game the last two years. Oh. Uh, so love to see that from Sidney Crosby, the anytime assist man from <laughs> Flip over there. It bangs yeah. out almost every single night. So make sure you're tuning into that as well. For me at number two, it's Evgeny Malkin. Uh, yes, it, there is some debate probably at who comes in number sure. two, or number three. But for me, again, I'm putting a little bit more emphasis on the offensive side of things right now. Evgeny Malkin has been such a strong player throughout his entire career. And honestly, I don't really think that he gets the credit that he deserves from, from the illustrious career that he has had in the National Hockey League, playing with Sidney Crosby, playing with Chris Letang, pay, playing with all of these guys. Again, another season for this guy as well. Struggled with injuries in the middle uh, in the middle part of his career. Last two seasons, didn't miss a game. Last year went down from 83 points to 67 points. Working on his defensive game as well, but... Uh, besides the, you know, you're not really going to get much of blocks and hits from this player. It's not part yeah. of his game. You know, it helps a little bit, but 199 shots, a definite regression last year uh, compared to the year prior. But I think Evgeny Malkin it can still get up to 70 plus points. 70 to 75 points is where I'm putting him at right now. I, like I still don't think you're going to really take this player until closer until double digit rounds. You know, I'm, th I'm looking at yeah. not the eight, nine, 10. Uh, I think eight's a little high in my opinion still, but I would take Evgeny Malkin somewhere in that realm in the middle of your draft in a 20 round, uh, in a 20 round league. Um, but yes, 70 plus points is in the realm I'm putting him at. You know, he's going to get the shots. I think he's going to get over 200 shots, the projections of what I'm putting mm -hmm. this player at right now, but he comes at me. He's very strong. He's got the slap shot still in, in his arsenal. He's good on the power play. He's playing alongside Sidney Crosby sometimes as well. So I, I think Malkin's number two. He's also that kind of player steal that at times, yeah, it can cost his team on the ice because he has a yeah. very short temper, but he racks up penalty minutes. And last year, 70, the year before that, 82. This is a guy who's put up triple digit point seasons and triple digit point penalty minutes. Sorry, not triple digit point, but triple digit penalty minutes. And some of those nights that Malkin goes off for a goal or two and a couple of boneheaded penalties are usually the weeks that you win your weeks. And I'm not saying that's just because of Malkin, but he's that type of player. He comes in at number two for me. Also steal. These guys are winners. And with this on the edge tipping point, like season, all of the metaphors you want to throw in there, they know that they're at the end of their rope here. And him and Sid and Latang have been one of the best trios to ever play the game and stay together winning this uh, franchise multiple cups. So I like to read into it a little bit more and think that maybe he does get right back into that 70-point realm, 75 points. So I'm with you wholeheartedly. Malkin at two. Let's talk about the rest of the Penguins. Perhaps a sneaky ad that doesn't hit the top five steal, but I'm looking at because he came in late in last season, and he played very well for this Penguins team. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about the goaltending and a lot more right after the break. Today's episode, however, is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. 
The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to fit your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you're burning rubber, not cash, with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge W's. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. And once again, thank you so much for tuning in to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, making it your first listen every single day. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the follow button, leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. Once again, make sure you're tuning into every single episode. Over the next week and a half, we'll break down all of our formats, our information, and league settings for the upcoming casual and competitive fantasy league drafts, entry fees, everything that you need to know of course, the three champions from last year will be returning automatic uh, automatic return into their league from last year. So we're going to have yep. some spots open uh, in both leagues, but three of them will be filled from the champions in the top three spots last year. But we'll break all that down over the next week. Flip over to you, my friend, once again. You, sir. Let's get to the number three spot on this yep. list because, it, it, you know, again, you know, I, I, I debated about having Chris Letang at number two. I went with Evgeny Malkin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've kind of went back and forth with a lot of these guys right now, but sure. I'm really, I'm really intrigued to see what you have to say and what you're feeling about this team. Yeah, look, um, very, very average across the board for the Pittsburgh Penguins when you're talking about yeah. metrics, when you're talking about statistics and numbers. Look, they finished the season strong, six two and two, and we're in the mix for a bubble spot. That's what I look at them again this year. They're gonna have to fight. They're gonna have to claw, scrape. Whatever uh, analogy you want to use here, it's going to get ugly, I think, for this team, Steel. And when you look at some of these numbers, their power play last year, whoa, 15.3% efficiency. Blue Jackets and Flyers were the only two teams worse than them on the power play. That power play has got to wake up. And when you look at uh, the quote-unquote additions in the offseason, Matt Grizzlick, Kevin Hayes, those aren't exactly the name steal that I think get it done. So in terms of this team, I'm worried. In terms of their target at number three, I got to go with old reliable here. Chris Letang, 137 hits, 136 block shots, 62 penalty minutes, 164 shots on net steal, and 51 points considering the relatively serious health scare that he had not too long ago. He also played, guess what, just like Malkin and Sid, 82 games. So at number three, it might not be sexy, but he fills out the peripherals and he is reliable. I'm taking Chris Letang at three, but I understand if you have maybe Eric Carlson there instead. I also have Chris Letang at three. And again, it was for go. me, it was interchangeable with, uh, with Evgeny Malkin and Chris Letang uh, for that number two spot. But I went a little bit more emphasis on the offensive side. Again, a bounce back season. I'm expecting from Malkin to get 70 plus points, but Chris Letang is number three. I think with all of these guys that we've already talked about, again, even with the the great production and the great health that we've seen from them over the last two years, in the back of your mind, the injury concern still realms, sure. uh, still uh, walks around. And especially with Chris Letang, who has had some serious, serious issues, uh, you know, blood clots, you know, again, we all hope and pray that he's fully healthy now and that he's back and everything's all great. But the, in the back of your mind, it has to be there. Uh, about this player so I do have Chris Letang at number three for all the reasons you just said 51 points from Letang the peripheral categories stand out over 135 plus blocks and hits with 160 shots 62 penalty minutes can be could be considered a banger league beauty because of that as well uh, but you got to keep in the back of your mind the injury concern that he has dealt with over the last few seasons uh, at number four for me uh, this one's tricky as well. It really does come down to Eric Carlson and Tristan Jari. It just really yes. depends on, yep. um, you know, it really depends on who you put more emphasis on and who you put more faith into the goaltending or the defensive side of having Eric Carlson, who's on the first power play unit, who gets over 24 minutes of average ice time. Uh, and how much do you trust Tristan Jari to have 
Uh, a better season than what we saw last year. Really struggled with his game. Uh, yeah. A lot of times he got pulled, was 19-25 in five last season with a 903 save percentage. Actually, uh, again, when you look at the last three seasons, he has been on a downward trajectory. Went from 919 save percentage three seasons ago to a 909 save percentage to a 903 save percentage. So not the trend you want to see from Tristan Jari, who, in my opinion, is still considered a very good starting goaltender in this league. I think maybe, he is, yeah. Maybe doesn't have the help you uh, you would expect him to have with these strong uh, stars in, uh, in front of him. But again, it's not just on them. It's on him as well. For me, mm. Tristan Jari does come at number four, though, with okay. all of that being said and done. Okay. I am okay. putting Tristan Jari at number three. Eric Carlson, I love the player. I think he's great on the power play. Um Again, the peripherals are a little bit to be desired with this player when it comes to blocks and hits. Uh, sure. For me, Tristan Dry at number four. I still think he's such a star out there. He mm. he he is the number one guy. I don't like Alex Nedeljkovic as no. the uh, as the number one guy. I think he's an okay backup. I think he can come in and, and make the you know the the one or two big saves in a game and and, and maybe steal a win out there. But solid backup. Tristan Jari, I agree. Yeah, it's solid solid backup. But Tristan Jari is the number one guy. He comes in at number four. Totally fair, steal. These are interchangeable for me. Yeah. And I can see them going right in the same uh, amount of rounds, same kind of angle that you're going to look at in terms of what you invest in them. Tristan Jari, you covered it nicely, but also he looked sensational at times last year. He led the league in six shutouts. So for me, I sometimes I look at this player steal and, you know, I like to say this between the ears a little bit with Tristan Jari, he seems yeah. to really lack in confidence at times. And then other times he goes on a heater and he looks like he could be in the mix for a Vesna, by the way, he's finished top 10 in Vesna voting twice in the last five seasons. So he can be a very good number one goaltender in the NHL. He's got to get it done and stay confident. He really is up and down. He goes cold and then he goes hot. So, I'm going to go honestly, Steele. I'm going to cop out and say 4A, 4B, but I do have Eric Carlson ahead of Jari. But honestly, pick your poison with either of these players because am I okay to really augment my roster with Eric Carlson, make him one of my last D-men or two? Or is Tristan Jari my secondary or ideally he's like my security blanket? I can nab him as my third goalie option, which I know is really expecting a lot. That's how I'd look. That. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm looking at it. However, I do want to talk about a player after the break that I think I would be going after in a week to week, or I'm taking a look at the start of the year and I have an injury. I'm picking him up right away. Lots of new faces in the mix last year for Pittsburgh, and it yeah. didn't really pan out. Kyle Dubas made a ton of moves to really offset this lineup. It didn't pan out. Let's talk about it after the break, because I do think Steele, this team is still good enough to compete for a playoff spot. 100%, 100%. I mean, besides the top two teams, in my opinion, the Metro, New York Rangers, and again, we talked about Carolina. They still lost a little bit. Uh, and we didn't like the, uh, the 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 losses they had this offseason. I think they're still a top two team, but no question that Pittsburgh can definitely fight in the Metro for a, for a top three spot or a wild card spot for that matter. Um, you know, all these players, besides Sidney Crosby, who's the clear-cut number one, is yeah. going to be drafted in the second round. I think every player that we've just talked about, you can expect to really nab them, uh, draft them anywhere from the 10th to the 15th round. That's where mm -hmm. all these next four guys kind of fall into. Yep. Uh, one after another type of situation. But we'll get to that fifth player, uh, as well as some breakout candidates or potential candidates to keep an eye on for this Pittsburgh Penguins team. But first... This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game all you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel it at any time you want. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe button, the follow button, Flip, and I appreciate all that love and support you show us. Monday through Friday is what you can expect 
starting in the month of September, back to five episodes a week. So thank you so much for tuning in throughout the entire summer. Love y'all out there. We appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for all of that. Flip, number five off the list for the Pittsburgh Penguins this season. Who are you looking at? Yeah, it's so for, like I said just before the break, Eric Carlson and Tristan Jari are the two names here. I think we've covered all the angles with this Pittsburgh Penguins club that really need to be covered. Look, looking at these line rushes, Anthony Beauvillier comes in to play with Lars Eller on the third line. They bring in Kevin Hayes in the offseason to shore up up the middle a little bit. The blue line, I have concerns. If Tristan Jari doesn't perform steel, this team is going to be in tough to make the postseason, even though it's Captain Crosby that carried them for most of the year. And let me spit out that stat that I almost forgot about. He hits the 1,000 assists mark this year, by the way. He moves into 10th in all-time scoring this season, and he also registers his 19th consecutive point-per-game or better season. Only Wayne Gretzky has ever done that. It really was Crosby pushing this team forward last year, Steele, and he's going to need to get some help. I don't know who's going to do it, though, because as much as those are the five guys off the board, Brian Rust, Ricard Raquel, these guys are going to have to do something, and the player that I'm looking at, Steele, and I want to pull up his stats because I read it the other day, but he came in uh, right before the deadline in Michael Bunting, and that's the player that I'm looking at as a very sneaky. I'm not drafting him because I'm a little bit worried about his consistency, but he came in in 21 games for the Pens last year, had 19 points, threw his weight around two, 25 hits. So the top five are the top five. They also come with their own risk aside from Sid. After that, though, if you have to get crafty, it's Brian Rust. It's Ricard Raquel. Hope something happens from him. But really, Steele, I'm keeping my eyes peeled on Michael Bunting because playing with a guy like Malkin and getting some power play time as well, fresh start, maybe finally we see Michael Bunting return to the form that we saw him in with the Maple Leafs, 55 points in 81 games, making him very fantasy relevant. Yeah, I think Michael Bunting is definitely a strong consideration going to next season. I think, yeah, not draftable. Under the radar, let's say. Under the radar. Maybe draftable towards the later state, like last pick of you. But I I, I like what you're saying as a week-to-week basis. You know, maybe one of the guys at the beginning of the season doesn't start well. You look at Michael Bunting, you pick him up, and he kind of picks things off playing on that top six line with uh, with Evgeny Malkin or Sidney Crosby. One guy that I'm really interested in, uh, again, I, I don't think I'm going to draft him, but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for what he does at the start of the season is mm. the newly acquired Rutger McGroarty uh, from the yeah. Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. You know, obviously uh, had some high demands and expectations about what he wanted this season. Yes. He believes he's NHL ready. He believes that he's first power play ready. He believes that he uh, should be in the top six, gr- uh, top six forward group. And that's what he's getting now with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's going to be playing projection-wise, with Evgeny Malkin and Michael Bunting. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a very interesting name to keep an eye on over the last two seasons with the uh, University of Michigan. 52 points in 36 games, 39 points in 39 games the year prior to that. He does have the goal-scoring touch and the goal-scoring ability. I think playing alongside guys like, again, Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, getting all that veteran presence, leadership, you get all of that around you, and he's going to have that uh, uh, over this next season to really develop uh, his game. You can see his contributions. And then a guy, again, I didn't really like the way all of the, all of the news was coming out about these sure. high demands and expectations. So sure. maybe there is a little bit of attitude. Maybe there is some uh, some thing, uh, something in between the ears that maybe Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin can kind of – snuff that out real quick and get him to a right mindset where he's comfortable. He's confident with his game playing in this group with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Cause he's got a chance and opportunity to play with one of the best players to ever do it in the national hockey league. So I like you saying Michael Bunting as a week to week option at the beginning of the season, see what's going on. I'm yeah. keeping an eyes peeled for Rucker McGordy. I see like what that. he does at the beginning of the season as mm. well, but there's a few yeah. options out there. Uh, you know, they bring in Cody glass, Kevin Hayes, uh, mm. on that third line. So interesting guys to bring into that bottom six group. I really do hope that Cody Glass can find his game and, and really get, you know, get get his confidence in, at the NHL level right now because he's been moved around. 
He's been tossed and turned and just hasn't seemed to work out for him. So maybe this is a good opportunity for Cody Glass. It's very true. I like that you bring up Cody Glass. My first ever professional interview, I interviewed Cody Glass at a upper deck uh, card signing event in Toronto. And he was drafted by the Vegas Golden Knights. Very uh, high prospect. Looked yeah. real good in the juniors for uh, uh, at the international level. So I like that you bring him up. These are some of those low risk, high reward scenarios that Kyle Dubas is trying to uh, – run out here because of his cap restraints at the end of the day steel this team runs through 87 it will go as far as he carries yeah. it realistically and if he's if last year was any indication steel <laughs> he's more than capable and he smells those opportunities going out the window and you will see another sensational year from 87 the rest of this team be very wary with we talked about the buffalo sabers on yesterday's show talking about the come up positivity lots of young angles fantasy gold mine this team not so much maybe riskier a lot older pieces injury concerns so be wary with this uh, other than uh sydney crosby 100 percent. yeah he is second round bound everyone else falls in that 10 to 15 round mm. area of where you're going to draft him still draftable but not as high as number 87 the man who does it who runs it by himself pretty much. So uh, that's the top five targets for this Pittsburgh Penguins team. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Pod your first listen every single day and tuning in for today's episode. Make sure you also go check out the Locked On NHL podcast where the season never ends, providing national expertise with a local perspective. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Once again, from both Flip and I, we wish you good luck with all of your summer bets. Continue to stay tuned for all the information and breakdown of our fantasy listener leagues, casual and competitive, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.